Hey everyone! Our spring summer season of growing has just about come to an end now that we're heading into March and our biggest issue in the growing space that we have right now is to do with this, the sunlight and how much of our backyard doesn't actually get direct sunlight during the winter months so this year we're going to have to try some different things to be able to keep growing because pretty much every year up until now whenever it's hit these winter months and the sun goes lower in the sky we just lose everything everything dies in our gardens over this time of year so time to get a little bit more tricksy this year and discover what will actually work in our space so it's just after four o'clock in the arvo here and you can see that the sunlight has been able to get all the way down to about here now in the next couple of hours the buildings behind us the sun will actually come in between a sliver of the buildings there and our garden beds here will get a little bit more light but won't be too much longer and and that just won't happen so we're hoping that our little babies that we've just been planting in the last sort of few weeks uh, will continue to grow somewhat but it's not super hopeful that they'll actually go gangbusters like everything did over the spring and summer months when we had the full sun in the area. The tomatoes are probably getting the most amount of hours of sunlight out of everything in the garden but uh, they've been sitting on this sort of green state for a while now not really reddening up um, so I think that they've probably gone as far as they are probably going to do to, uh, this season. Basil been <laughs> puzzle it's just still going gangbusters we've chopped that back a few times and it's still growing it actually looks like it's turned to seed to the ones at the back there so uh, it just seems like nothing we can do stops the puzzle from going but we'll just uh, have to see how it keeps going all right to explain why we're having this issue where the Sun is different spots at different times of the year we're going to go to our trusty basketball to show us how the earth goes around on the axis and how the earth rotates around the sun. So this is stuff that most of us learned in primary school but it's been a long time since then for most of us so let's get a refresher. All right here's the earth. The earth rotates around the sun which we know happens in 365 days but the earth also spins for 24 hours. So the difference is that when the earth spins on its axis, the axis isn't like this. The axis is actually like this. So when it rotates around the sun, it's going around like that. Which means that some parts of the year, you get a lot more sun and the sun sits higher in the sky. And then the other parts of the year, if you're on this side, you're not getting as much of the day and the sun's sitting lower in the sky. So this is how uh, things like eaves are important to your house because you, the eaves on your house sit out in a way that the sun when it's high in the summer is sitting up really high and the eaves cause a lot of shade into your house and then in the winter time the, the sun's sitting lower which allows more sunlight into your windows and warms up your house more. So if you're someone that's into things like earthships and just building houses in a way that's the most functional and less expensive on your heating and cooling bills. Uh, really important that you understand how the sun rises and sets um, to get the most out of using that solar uh, energy throughout the day, no matter what time of the year it is. Just as a bit of a fun exercise to show you how this uh, works, I've I found a couple of pictures that I'm gonna share up here that show different sequences of how the sun rotates around. So in this photo here, you can see if the photo was taken at the same time of day throughout the year, um, you can see the path of travel and how it changes through the sky. Um, this one here is another representative of that as well. So there's some really cool things that you can find and some really cool pictures people have made to really show how that functions. So back in our own space, we're talking about uh, how we've basically got uh, high buildings on either side of us. This is, this is our backyard and here is where our house is and here's the back fence so the garden's all sitting in here so our building is obviously much taller at the back there and we don't have a very tall building behind us which is unfortunate because we are south facing and in the southern hemisphere we really want to be north facing to get the most out of the sun in the winter time but unfortunately that's just not how it's worked out for us here wish we did know that before we purchased but i don't know if it would have affected uh, our purchasing because the space that we've got to play with is really really cool we just don't have the functionality that we, we really want out of it through the winter months 
So with our buildings the way they are, the sun's coming around this side and through the summer months, no problems. The sun's up really tall, so those rays come down to our backyard. But in the winter months, it's setting down further. So we only have certain amount of times when it's at the start of the day and where it's at the very end of the day where it sort of sneaks through the gaps around the building as it comes from the east to the west. It's very, very hard to explain in words and hand, hand gestures, but I'm trying to do my best to explain it. So I hope that works for everyone. So where does that leave us for our garden? Well, in previous years, we've literally just left the garden die. It, the stuff of the veggie coop seems to be a little bit perennial and it seems to just die off and then come back each year, which is really, really cool. Uh, like we've said numerous times throughout this season, we have not done anything in that veggie coop. We've just let it do its own business this year and we've been able to get quite a bit of produce out of it, which has been really nice. Um, apart from the luck that we've had in there, everything else in the backyard every other year has just died on us, which has been really disheartening through those winter months. Um, it can get pretty depressive out there. So we're trying to combat this year um, by trying to figure out a few more things that'll actually work. It's been slightly frustrating that when we're doing our uh, research into what fruits and vegetables or plants in general that can grow, uh, we get all these websites that come up with no direct sunlight, no problems. Here's 15 vegetables you can grow in the shade. And then you go into them and they're all partial shade, which equates to about five hours of sunlight direct sunlight required a day so it's been such a struggle to find things that'll actually work in the space that we're working with. Um, herbs seem to be the next best thing so we're probably going to focus on switching our veggie patches into herb areas during the winter months and we'll probably just bring in a lot more flowers that um, don't need direct sunlight that can can thrive in those conditions but we would really love any feedback from any of you at all that would like to add some comments down below about things that you think that we should try through these winter months when we just don't have direct sunlight i've got a half-baked plan of trying some uh hydroponic setups with a grow light um, but we don't have any indoor space whatsoever to set it up so i'd need to build some sort of uh, weatherproof area out the back um, to see if we can work that out but that's that's a half cocked plan at the moment and not something we're fully committed to and I think Betty looks at me with crazy eyes every time I mention it because she knows how much mess I'm probably probably gonna make there in the backyard but it'd be nice to keep it as usable space over these colder months all right just before we head off I just wanted to tell you that uh, on our next video we will be announcing the winner to our hiking book that we were giving away a few videos ago during our adventure. Uh, we tend to keep our adventure videos and our gardening homestead videos a little bit separated from each other but there's always that little bit of crossover since a lot of our journeys are looking for where we're going to set up our homestead. So feel free to check those out because uh, either each way the videos tend to have a little bit in common other than just us. Um, but yes, so in our next video, just keep your eyes out for who will be the winner. All right, guys, thanks for joining us. And I hope you have a few bits and pieces that you can uh, put down below and help us out there in our winter month. And we'll see you all next time.